So, we are going to be painting Rackham Confrontation Orcs, but we're not painting them in a standard, most typical Games Workshop green skin color. And I'm painting these up for the game Frostgrave, where I don't even think orcs exist. I have no idea what to call this video yet. But we're going to go into this and figure it out on the way. Um, been trying to figure out different ways to uh, add more skin color to orcs. Uh, I tried it with the Blood Bowl orcs last year and uh, didn't quite work out with them because I've seen some really good orc skin uh, paint jobs that have you know, a bit more color into them, a bit more flesh tone, a bit more blues and purples. And uh, I could figure out how to do that on a larger scale figure, but trying to work it into a 28 mil miniature, a bit difficult, but uh, came up with something not quite what I was looking for, but uh, I think it worked out. At least it looks decent. So enough of the rambling. Let's jump into it. We are starting off with a mix of Vallejo green gray mixed with some Vallejo game color stormy blue. Two things. First of all, I say green gray. I do mean green gray because there is a Vallejo model color called gray green, which is a different color. Thanks Vallejo for that. And Stormy Blue is uh, also obviously the shade color, but this is not quite the shade color. Uh, this is more just a placeholder for the actual shade color that we're going to be applying later. Uh, the reason why I'm using the Stormy Blue here rather than the purple, which we are eventually going to work our way towards, is because if you look at the color wheel, green and blues uh, are closer to each other and they blend in together better. But uh, starting off with an overall coat of this, making sure we cover up everything before we move on to the next step. Step two, mix in more green-gray to the previous mix and start putting on the layers, building up our colors. Uh, I try to paint these a little bit higher standard than most of my rank and file stuff. Uh, so the paint here is extremely thin and the layers are slowly built up. So we have transparent layers. Uh, we're not expecting this to cover everything in one coat. Uh, we put it on, let it dry, work on another area with the miniature, put it on. Uh, by the time we're done with that, we move back to the first area, redo it, and just slowly build up the colors. This gives us a nice smooth transition between the colors, so no stark lines. Everything is nice and pretty. The next layer is again more green gray added and so we're slowly transitioning up into that uh, pure green gray which we'll eventually get to and again the colors are excuse me the paint is very thin very transparent layers very slowly built up uh, it's time consuming but the end results are worth it Finally, we've worked our way up to using just straight green gray, uh, working on successively smaller areas of the miniature to define all those muscle areas. Uh, once again, very thin layers of paint, slowly built up. Time to start working on the highlights, and for that we are adding Vallejo Game Color Light Flesh, uh, excuse me, Pale Flesh, to the green-gray mixture. And while the results are fine, uh, this is where my idea had in my head kind of fell apart. Um, it'll be more clear in a moment, but mixing paints together and glazing them one on top of each other achieves two separate effects. Uh, what I really want to do is have a more of a transition to a more uh, human fleshy pink tone towards the highlights uh, of my orc skin, my ideal orc skin. That's a little difficult to do on such a small figure. Um, mixing the paints together, you tend to get more of a, a blended mush, but if I apply the pink over the top, I'm definitely going to get much more pink intensity. But... Um, 
it's definitely something I want to try on a larger scale orc one of these days, but for the moment, this works out pretty well. And finally, finishing off the final highlights, more of the pale flesh added, uh, just working on very just upper areas of the miniature. You can see just quick brush strokes, not broad, uh, transparent layers. Paint is a bit more concentrated now and just hitting the edges where I want the light to catch on the flesh. Now, while I was not going for green orc skin, I did still want a little bit of green showing, and I thought my green-gray mixture was just a little off. So, decided to tint it a bit with some Vallejo green ink glaze, and this is kind of a mistake I admit on my part. Uh, the intensity of the green is much too bright for this paint scheme, which is much more muted and drab. Um, Mixing up a, a glaze out of paint or uh, adding a bit of brown maybe to it would have worked uh, a bit better. Uh, so if you're following this step by step at home, I would probably skip this layer because uh, I don't think it's quite necessary, but I am doing it because I kind of did a few figures in this scheme and I had to you know continue doing it for the entire war band. Um, it does add some color to it. However, it's very easy to screw up. Uh, because that green is so intense, if you get a little bit too much in the recesses here or there, it's really going to show in the end. So I would just skip this if I were you, but I'm just including it to be honest. Now this is where the fun begins. That original stormy blue I used in the first step for the shade color was just a placeholder because the blue mixed uh, together better than the, uh, with the green gray than the royal purple that I'm currently using. Uh, if I mix the royal purple in to that first initial step, I would have ended up with just a very muddy, uh, you know, odd shade of purple to it, which is not, it didn't have the intensity that I would have wanted. So that's why we are layering it on at the end instead. So we still achieve that nice, uh, bright or intense purple color that I wanted in the recesses. So what we have here is very, very thinned out of Laiho Game Color Royal Purple. And I'm just slowly, very slowly working in transparent layers, building it into the recesses of the model. Uh, so this is done in, like I said, several different layers. The areas where I just want a little bit of shadow, which is one or two very light coats. So it's very subtle, very noticeable. Once that's dry, we start going back and building more into the deeper recesses where I want that, you know, more shade color, where I want that purple color more intense. So it's a very slow process, much like all the other previous transparent layers we applied. Uh, this one actually is a bit more transparent, I believe. More layers added and again, very just very subtly, slowly built up. The first one or two, not going to be very noticeable at all, but once we get to the end, the color really starts coming out after all those layers have been applied. So now we see the intensity, the richness in the recesses. Uh, it's very easy to overdo this, so um, when you're just beginning, I would say, you know, start out subtle. Uh, you don't want that purple um, creeping in too much into the base color. It's, it is a recess color and just made to uh, give a bit more interesting look to the shadows rather than just using a, uh, a brown or a green in this case. With the flesh out of the way, there's only a few other little bits we have to worry about. Uh, first, the nails on the hands and the feet. Uh, first, outlining those in black and then applying a mix of yellow ochre and uh, beige, both of those Vallejo model colors. Uh, this particular figure has very long nails compared to the other ones I've done in the Warband, so I did add a bit more beige and add a highlight to his nasty little toes. The teeth are painted just like the toes, except for using just straight 
beige. Uh, the lips, we are using Vallejo Game Color Hexed Lichen. And then highlighting that by adding a little bit of white to it and a few little striped areas. Uh, that really adds, adding white and going a bit more intense than I normally would, uh, adds a bit of sheen to the lips without having to use a gloss varnish. And then finally, finishing off with the eyes. Uh, very simple, just a spot of Leho Model Color Flat Red, and then a teeny tiny drop of Leho Model Color Golden and Yellow for the pupils. And with that, we're done. And there we have it, our finished Orc Shaman. Uh, I've included a few other figures that I painted previously. Uh, unfortunately, my practice figures I think actually came out a bit better than the one used in this video, uh, mainly because they had more of a muscular, ripped uh, tone to their uh, body structure. The one I picked for the video, unfortunately, was a bit more uh, paunch. So you can see the detail in the muscles a, a bit better on some of the other ones. Uh, it's a bit more defined, and I did add a bit more, um, bit more contrast, a bit more uh, intensity to the uh, definition. But that's the word I'm looking for. A bit more definition to the muscles than what I normally do. Uh, overall, I do like the scheme. Once again, not quite the orc flesh tone I'm looking for. I'm still in search of that mystery flesh tone that's going to make me happy. Uh, Glazing on a more pink flesh at uh, towards the end, I think, is part of uh, what I'm looking for. However, again, it's very difficult to do that on such a small figure. One of these days, I'm going to practice with some 54 or even larger scale miniatures to uh, perfect that mysterious orc skin that's been eluding me for so long. But until that day, hope you enjoyed this, and as always, thanks for watching.